Good morning, folks. Yesterday is why we troubleshoot and go for test runs. The mobile observatory will be all aces soon, and I do want to thank our overnight hosts at the Fox Hollow Farm Naturally in Fredericktown, Ohio. Many of you know the tour will have some less tech-focused segments on agriculture. I knew I was going to get that here, but the beautiful scenery, friendly faces, and some very adorable dogs made us pretty sad to leave. Top News Rundown. CBS Pittsburgh and KDKA describe how one author believes we can use solar and lunar tides to predict earthquakes in Los Angeles, California. It's worth a read from a curious mind. Still got no helio viewer access, but the iris is doing its best to give us our fix. Particle flux visible there at the end, blocking the plasma arcs. The coronal fields on the sun gave us a few days of calm and then yesterday decided to go nuts again. Per the evening news last night, we were thinking a calmer time may approach with the solar polar flip almost complete as of mid-May, but it appears we have more instability and this is causing a significant amount of variability to the IMF polarity offered in our direction of the heliosphere. Latest of the coral reef studies puts a dagger in the neutral biodiversity theories that sees species as interchangeable within some systems. They find that the abundant species have specific roles in the local equilibrium and cannot be readily supplanted without significant change to the local environment. We also have a pretty good paper out describing how the temperature variations in the Atlantic can be described solely by natural forcing. While this article makes me smile, I might suggest that to ignore all human effects on GMT is to ignore reality and appear one-sided, biased. So we know that the Corona Hole ramped the earthquake condition index after days of being in the sea range. Volcanic activity slides in with an eruption at the Pavlov volcano and a magnitude 6 tremor that shook Mexico. This is yet another example of potential storm formation in the tropics with an earthquake in the mix. But there's more. Philippines took a significant swarm yesterday. And just to give you an idea of how these connections play, at the lower stratosphere level we always see where the strongest Earth-Sun connections or Uyen candidates are likely via the relative humidity. This is one of the ways we look to confirm that full vertical moisture in the atmosphere. Let's quickly check out our top weather watches. Eastern flood zone in South America has shifted considerably south from its position the last week. In the southwest Pacific, we watch twin lows spin off the North Island of New Zealand and the southeastern portions of Australia, the latter drawing cloud cover and southern New Zealand dip below freezing overnight. Europe seeing a trifecta of storm zones. The east still has a line going north at... Greece and the surrounding Mediterranean areas have a thunderstorm chance tonight, and Ireland and the UK getting an edge cresting now from the North Atlantic. In the US, the story is the same. It's a lot of heat and moisture heading north and will make for the bad storms again, with lesser events splitting up as they head north across into Canada. Earth is magnetically connected to our star down south. It appears grainy and unclear here to denote that it is on the back side of the sun rather than on the earth facing side. The solar flaring is coming back very slowly. We do expect this with some larger sunspots coming onto the disk here. We'll go delta hunting in tonight's evening news. That corona hole that elevated the current earthquake index has a northern extension on the back side of it as well. We can't yet see it. It's by the huge filament, still on the right side of the power chart at ISWA, but it seems stronger than this first one that's coming through now. Solar winds spent the last 24 hours calming, but some minor variability this morning. Nothing major and our shields are just fine. Something to note, a couple minor CMEs entered the geo-effective corona hole stream ahead of the current opening and may bolster the leading density shock of the coming stream of particles. Lastly folks, the closing of yesterday's fly on the wall was so much fun, we put it before the first hour that we recorded, cut it to be its own audio segment, and wanted to share it with all of you, so go check out 12 pretty good minutes of discussion. Shots of our star to close, eyes open, no fear, at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.